one. What's going on, everybody? I'm John. And I'm Dennison. And this is the catch up. Heck yeah. All right, we got oh, that out of the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys ever wonder this if you haven't watched or listened to the audio version? You understand why we do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It comes together very well. It does. Um, it does. <laughs> it do. So, okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Three, two, one. Okay, if you're just listening to us, uh, maybe for the first time, who knows? Uh, but you can leave us a rating and review and subscribe if you like us. Uh, let us know how we're doing, what you thought about the episodes, what you thought about the topics, um, and and maybe even what we could do better. Uh, this will help us continue to grow, but also tell the algorithm that people are reacting to this show. And it will share it on whatever platform you're listening on with more people, which is a, a really easy way to support us. Um, we're also live streaming on Facebook right now. Facebook.com slash the catch up cast. Uh, you can jump in on the comments in real time. We've already got some people lined up. Darian on that notification gang, as always, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate that. So we'll uh, have people jump in as we record and kind of steer the conversation in, in their own way. As uh, we discuss, they leave their comments and uh, we interact with you all in real time. Um, mm -hmm. So we love that. We also have our Instagram, Instagram.com slash the catch up cast. You know, you can just search us on all these platforms. Um, YouTube, we're constantly uploading new shorts over there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and some full and episodes of course, as well. Exactly. Yeah. So we have all that going for us. Uh, we got our website, no signal rocks.com. Catch up podcast is on the drop down box there. Uh, all of this is linked in the description of this episode, but there you can find all of our episodes, all of our uh, uh, videos, and all of our merch and apparel in one place. You can support us financially that way. That's the best way to do it. And money goes directly to us, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, email us at theketchupcast at gmail.com. Tell them one more time, man. What's it called? Man, it's theketchupcast at gmail.com. That's right. uh, it's a great, great place where you guys can, uh, you know, get in touch with us, uh, interact with us. It's, a, it's another way you can interact with us. And it's also a great way to ask any questions that you had uh, about the podcast, um, questions that you want us to answer on the podcast, or really just any way, uh, just a, a way to, uh, you know, present a topic that you might want us to cover. Yes. Exactly. So uh, we got some good things that we want to talk about today. And uh, the first one is the trending show on Netflix that could end up, mm -hmm. I read this just yesterday, this could end up being the most watched show of all time in Netflix history. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me. Which is crazy. Yeah. What is the Squid Games? <laughs> why is it so popular man i don't netflix I, I i'm more of a amazon and cuddle guy rather than netflix and chill um, ah, okay yeah okay. so okay. you know I mean? you're on the opposite side of the cloth man <laughs> I, I, yeah, the opposite side of the coin cut from a different yeah. cloth i feel you though yeah um so like tell me about it what's what's the deal with this uh so it's a it's a, a south korean uh show uh, that Netflix has the, uh, I think, localization rights to. So they put it on their platform. Um, and essentially the show is about, um, well, I, I, don't wanna, I don't want to give up some of the premise of it because I think some of it is just kind of like something that you, you really kind of have to be into or, or not really be into, but you'll lose some of the mystery that comes with it by knowing a little bit of it. But uh, essentially uh, just a quick synopsis. It's uh, about a bunch of people who get wrangled together, uh, essentially kidnapped in some form or semi kidnapped, I should really say in some form or fashion. Uh, and they are forced to play a bunch of old um, kids games um, to uh, effectively uh survive in some form or fashion so so it's like if bts starting the hunger games <laughs> sure but okay. i mean less pop idol <laughs> <laughs> okay um, um so what kind of kids games are we talking about like uh so uh, stuff? 
Uh, so they have most of them are Korean kids games, but okay. uh, well, I wouldn't say most of them. Some of them are, and some of them aren't. So, um, like one of the games was uh, like Red Light Green Light. Um, okay, which was weird. They had some other ones um, that was. And and you have to think of each of these kids' games as, um, you know what? I'm just going to do this. <laughs> it's going to be a semi spoiler, so I just want you guys to know. So if you're if you're on here, oh, because it's it's hard to describe if I have to kind of beat around the bush. But essentially, we right, came spoiler alert. Exactly. So you know you want to skip to a certain point if you're listening on the audio version. Uh, and then if you're on the live stream, well, like, I don't know, just turn it off for like a couple seconds <laughs> Click on our website, click the link on our website and go yeah. there for minutes and then come back. Exactly. Come back. Um, but essentially, um, they have a bunch of different games and it's a grim side of the game. So essentially if you fail in some of these games, you are eliminated. Um, and elimination isn't exactly the, uh, nice way you want it to happen <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah there's there's like a bunch of kids games like i said there was uh red light green light is one of them uh, another one is um this weird shapes game um uh that they have to essentially get out and if they can't get the shape out fully um they can get eliminated as well uh and of course there's a bunch of other kind of weird things that are going on in the background that really um, personifies or not personifies, but um, uh, heightens the suspense and the, the craziness of it. Right. I think a lot of it is the reason, I think one of the big reasons why it's become so popular is because it's so grim, right? Mm. It's, it's, mm. you fail these, you are eliminated and, it's just right there. There's no like couple seconds of like, oh, okay, you know, uh, I get some time to relax. No, it's just bam, you're it's over. So wow. I think that's kind of one of the big things that's gotten everybody. And it's also that it's that they're like such simple games, but um, the consequences of failing said simple games are so high, right? And I think a lot of people just see them see themselves in these situations, right? Because it's like it's like if if um if someone said, "Hey, man, I'm going to uh they uh they got both me and you, right?" And they said, "Hey, man, um I'm going to give you a million dollars if you can win these game. If you can uh if I'm going to I'm going to do, we're going to play hide and seek, right? If you can survive or hide for five minutes or whatever like that. Yeah. Uh, and then make sure that I never tag you or never discover you. I'll give you a million dollars, but if you don't, well, you'll be eliminated. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of people are strategizing especially like online they're like oh well, you know i could do that i could do that or whatever like that but you know i i think it's crazy to think that these are like high such high stress situations you don't want to be eliminated um that a lot of people when they're in those situations they act like how the people do in the uh show so yeah. that was a quick weird crazy synopsis but yeah I've decided that you can never predict what people are going to relate to or, or extract, <laughs> you know, uh, something that they can put themselves in the position of. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Definitely. There were aspects of that with the hunger games where people felt like they could, you know, have done this in this situation. And, and it, I say, I bring that up because this sounds similar to me in that capacity. Right. Like, yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, it it is a game where if you lose, you die. You know, that's that's how mm -hmm. you lose. Actually, is by getting killed. Um, yeah. So uh, I BTS. I, I say this from the perspective of this too. BTS Korean pop group. I don't get why they're popular here. <laughs> they bring nothing new to the table uh, in the in the realm of music. They really don't. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not 
the first, I mean, Opa Gangnam style was the first I remember of Korean music that took over the U S right. Um, uh-huh. But BTS is basically like 98 degrees or, or Backstreet Boys, things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and other than their looks, I don't really see why people are just gravitating to them so hard. Um, and so with that said, I'm curious as to, and I'm saying this too, as a guy from the standpoint of, I don't understand why anime is so popular um, Mm -hmm. in American culture. You know, it's very Japanese centric. Although I will say from the little, I do know about, I feel like they've more appealing to uh, American culture as well. Um, But, you know, why is it that this, Squidly Diddly games, right? <laughs> um, why, why are the Squid games? How did they know, or what made them want to share this with the American public? You know, um, like you said, I get you know, there's a certain level of suspense, but it's like instantaneous suspense. You don't have time to really latch on to the um, the sadness of this character losing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I guess I have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's the thing, right? It's, um, to be honest, uh, I think uh, a lot of Korean dramas and uh, a lot of Korean media has actually started to kind of um, come in just because I think it's a, it's a fresh take on a lot of genres that are going on, uh, television as well as film uh, genres that I think a lot of Western um, audiences haven't really experienced before, right? So I think like Squid Games, for ex- example, is something that is completely different than any sort of show that I would have watched in a Western, um, in any sort of like Western media, right? And so I think yeah. that's what's so fascinating about it is that it's in a whole different left field, right? And sometimes, yeah, some of, sometimes you get stuff that's really weird, but then it's also there's sometimes that it gives you stuff that's like really powerful stories that are also still really, really enjoyable to watch um, and kind of see what's going on. And so I think kind of going outside of Korean media, I think it also applies to like Japanese media and any sort of foreign um, type of media where it's just different. Right. I mean, like for instance, right, uh, Top Gear, right? I, <laughs> you both, me, you, you and me watched Top Gear, and we enjoy it. Um, and even though there's an American Top Gear, um, I find that the British Top Gear is far more enjoyable than the American Top Gear. Not Absolutely. saying that the American Top Gear is bad, just mm-hmm. I find it more enjoyable because of the different type of perspective that they bring to it and the different type of way that they do it. Not, um, and not to mention that the presenters were actually really good, but even going past that, I think it's just like kind of different. It's a different experience. And I think that's the reason why like squid games and uh, actually what was it? Uh, Two years ago, parasite was a big uh, Mm -hmm. Korean film that came over as well. Uh, And it, won a whole bunch of nominations and stuff like that. Um, uh, And then of course, anime has blown up for, but it, but to be honest, it's been in Western culture in some way, in some form or fashion for years and years. Yeah. Like 25 years. Um, Yeah, exactly. Um, But it's just now starting to gain a little bit more prominence uh, or prominence. There we go. That's the right way. (laughs) Um, Well, I would argue with that. The reason is uh, because adults are watching it now. And I think it's because we've been mm. groomed since we were kids, you know, cause I watched uh, Pokemon, which was an mm-hmm. anime. Mm-hmm. I watched Yu-Gi-Oh, which was an anime. Uh, mm-hmm. They build card games around both of these things. Right. Um, they, uh, I watched uh, Dragon Ball, um, mm-hmm. which was like the iconic anime. Um, but really, like a lot of those animes were, you know, built in a way where with the translation, I guess, you know, it was very Americanized. But then there was a lot of that stuff that I don't 
I didn't care for like uh like do 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 do. <laughs> Oh no, it's bo 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 man. Oh my bad. <laughs> I remember now. That dude shot nose hair out of his nostrils. I, it was people. a little strange. It was a little strange, yeah. 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 But... He literally strangled bad guys with his nose hair. <laughs> <laughs> you a tremor, my guy. Um, I, hey yeah, man. That... You know, superpowers come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> um I used to like Code Lyoko. That was a cool show. Um, yeah, that was. Actually, funny enough, that was a French show. That was a French show? Really? That was a French show, Oh, man. wow. Yeah, actually, I think I knew that. I think I knew that. Um, but yeah, it, it was a French show. And then I forgot that, though. And then um, what was the other one? Uh, totally Spies, man. I used to watch that when I was uh, a kid. Yeah, I remember that. I think that was Australian, yeah. technically. Really? Okay. Or Canadian, either Australian or Canadian. Really? See, look at that. We've always had foreign influences, and we didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But um, but yeah, you know, I so they've been around a while, and anime mm -hmm. has been around a while, and I think it has opened the door to some of these other um influences that we've had. A, a lot of it coming from South Korea lately, you know. So, mm -hmm. um. What is it for you? I mean, it sounds like you're into it. What is it for you that hooked you on the little squid, man? <laughs> um, because, yeah, uh, I mean, it is something that's kind of hooked me. But to be honest, um, I think it was just, just the premise. The premise was really interesting because at first – I only started watching it because uh, Christina wanted to start watching it uh, because there's, you know, been a whole bunch of uh, social media buzz on it. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, man, this is crazy. Look at this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I was like, you know, what? we'll go ahead and watch it. We'll, I'll watch it with her. Um, and then it hooked me because of just the premise. It was so crazy and outlandish and so different. It was like saw in some ways but not really it's not like as gory it's just wild right it's um and it's the situations that people are put into and the idea on like how that all worked uh it just uh really surprised me to be completely honest it surprised me and amazed me and so for me i just got hooked because of that just because yeah. of that premise that it's so different than anything that I would have thought of or anything that I would have watched. And especially nowadays that I feel like there's so much like, and it might just be me, but I feel like a, a lot of media right now that I've been consuming, if it hasn't been, um, you know, just your normal Netflix stuff, it's been a lot of like either sitcoms or a lot of like superhero stuff. Yeah. Um, like superhero, you know, any sort of Marvel stuff. So it was kind of refreshing to see something that was out of that norm, out of that cycle. Yeah, sure. Um, the fact that it is taking over in such a way that it is, um, do you think, I mean, it's very early on, but do you think that this opens the door for more shows like this or do you think that opens the door for more korean films to be um in america and I, you know i guess it's something that was interesting to me but i was thinking about this probably a few years back but how hollywood dominated the film industry for a long time right and so then mm -hmm. within the last 10 15 years you've seen a lot of bollywood things you know kind of blow up as well mm -hmm. um and now you're starting to see Korean stuff blow up. And it makes me wonder how long the dominance of Hollywood will last. And it's hard for me to imagine a world where Western filmmaking doesn't dominate the world. Right. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around that. And I, I just would, it'll be interesting to see how this trend continues to grow because especially if this becomes the most watched netflix show of all time i mean it's not going to be the last of a korean uh, film or series or whatever that you see oh yeah of course yeah. um also uh let me ask you this too before you answer mm. is this i haven't watched it 
at all. Is it like live action or is this a uh, like anime, Korean anime? Oh no, no, it's it's all live action. Oh, okay, all right, mm-hmm. interesting, yeah, crazy. Um, so uh, to be honest, I think um, I think this will open the door at least, or at least it will introduce a lot more people to it. Because to be honest, I think that's what's really made uh, these. Um, foreign, uh, foreign films, foreign uh, shows, foreign animation uh, have such um, powerful force is because it's more accessible. Um, because I remember, like, for instance, if we're going to use like anime or whatever like that. I remember yeah. when I was younger, like the only way for me to see it was to watch like Cartoon Network and watch like Toonami and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, right. Because there wasn't any other way for me to see anime um, and for me to be introduced to any of that stuff where mm-hmm. now you can just go into Netflix, right? And, um, and find a whole slew of whole you know different films different foreign films not just korean but you know uh japanese you can find um chinese you can find all sorts of different stuff um that's really really cool and really interesting um and so um i think really with the advent of streaming and uh more things being able to be localized to the to these uh, american streaming platforms it really opens uh people's eyes up to whole different uh uh, you know a whole bunch of different cultures um films and shows and stuff like that that they would never have seen that they have never seen before and they probably would never have seen if they didn't have access to like netflix or any of these streaming platforms that are doing these localizations um and so when we're going over to the film side right with hollywood and and bollywood and all these different um film foreign film agencies um i to believe what i feel like is i feel like we'll get to a point that um we'll stop calling like oh well you know you just go to hollywood for your main thing uh, if you want to make it into any sort of film, I feel like it's going to be, we're going to get to a point and this may be more like a utopian style thought, but I feel like we're going to get to a point where it's more like a, a world or an international type of filming agency that mm. um, actors of all different um, countries from all different countries in all different nations can come together and make these amazing new films where you're getting all different types of different ideas and, and thought process and stuff like that. And um, I think it has the potential of helping the film industry because I feel like lately the film industry has kind of gotten a little stale. Yeah. Yeah. Complacent and stale. I, I, or at least in the uh, Western side, right. I feel like there have been a lot of films that have been very much like boring or, or remakes, like a bunch of remakes from like old movies that we already have instead of fresh new ideas. And I think that's the other thing, right? I think that's the other thing that's driving it, right? If consumers are tired of what Western media is producing, then you are going to look for a different media form or a different foreign media form or wherever to fulfill that satiation or that need or whatever like that, uh, that you yeah. want of like different and brand new ideas. And so I think that's where a lot of these films that are getting on these streaming platforms, films and shows um, are fulfilling those needs that Western, sure. that the Western um, film um, film industry isn't able to do. Well, and, and, you know, you bring up a point that, I, well, okay, so the new James Bond movies come out. I am a little nervous to see it, you know, uh, because mm-hmm. movies like Skyfall were so good and mm-hmm. Casino Royale, but they were original and different takes on that series, right? Um, mm-hmm. And there's been really nothing to guarantee that this is going to be anything original. Really, they haven't even told you what the premise is, you know? Yeah, exactly. You don't even know what the movie is actually about, which I think is 
hopefully not their tactic to get people to come watch it but i think that's what their tactic is is just yeah you don't know what it's about and um but you're right you know and it's like we said in our last episode you know competition breeds ingenuity and so maybe maybe these film companies need somebody to push them you know to Mm -hmm. do different things um because my lord man like we're about to have a boba fett series yeah <laughs> a hawkeye series a mm-hmm. uh, wandavision uh, loki um an anime take on star wars like come on man mm-hmm. like give me something different <laughs> right <laughs> give me something original uh, now with that said th- i'm not saying those are inherently bad shows uh, i've heard really good things about the uh mandalorian and loki mm-hmm. looks incredible um, oh yeah they're all great shows yeah um but yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I think we do need to have some sort of like, I don't know, new ideas, right? Uh, right? Or at least take it out of the hands of these big corporations. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or just, you know, push them to try new things. That's really, mm-hmm. that's really my main thing. So, well, did you have anything you else you wanted to touch on the show? Because uh, I think we had a good discussion on this otherwise. Uh, I, I guess my only thing is I, I would say like, if you're interested in the show, I think you should watch it. Uh, it's really worth watching. Um, it's a really weird premise, but it, like I said, it will hook you, um, because it hooked me because I came in very skeptical. So yeah. I say if, if you're just interested or at least curious, check it out, check out the first episode. If you don't like it, then probably don't. Um, I try to give shows like three episodes or so, uh, if, if, you know, until if I can, unless it's a really, really bad show, but yeah, I usually give about three episodes. If I don't like it, then I'll jump out. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, man, uh, we're going to switch up topic a little bit here. Um, Mm -hmm. so I had an awesome weekend. I talked about a little bit in that last episode, Uh, Mm um, And, you know, involved in a band in Kansas show, a lot of good people out there, um, shopped local all weekend and went to a comedy show and got to meet some of the comedians and hang out with them afterwards. It was awesome. Um, cool thing. So first thing I did, I, we went to Delano, which if you live anywhere near Wichita, check out the Delano district, whatever you've heard about what it used to be like it is not, it's my favorite part of Wichita and it's so cool. And there's so many good little things. There was this place I went to. I'll show you some of the things I grabbed here in a second called Sweet and Saucy. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to know what it was about. Well, it's literally the left side of it is all candy. The right side of it is all sauces. Um, mm. And then they have a whole bunch of socks in the background just randomly. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. But this place is huge. It looks small from the front. It is gigantic inside of there. Um, and so, you know, I went in and uh grabbed a couple things before that we went to the leslie's coffee company uh mm. i'd never eaten there i got toast with goat cheese and preserves right they're like mm. uh black, blackberry jam mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> like, you thought something like that would be like oh it was good right no this was insane <laughs> it tasted so good so that started the day off great and then coffee was fantastic too of course Mm. um but yeah i got uh went over to well first i went over to uh spectrum music okay and Mm -hmm. this is something i love and you and i used to do this man uh we used to go to cd music exchange Mm -hmm. uh, that was the place man it was the place you could have you had video games in there too you had movies in there um Mm -hmm. and they were a chain but that's where I found Alter Bridge, and I fell in love with Alter mm-hmm. Bridge by buying a CD from them randomly. I'd never listened to it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we listened to it in your car, and I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> this is wild!" <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So I we love- were going in for Guns and Roses. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. What GNR that. album? Was- oh, I was probably. You know what's weird? I was probably trying to buy the Use Your Illusion album, and I didn't buy that until eight years later. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so we, uh, anyway, we were, you know, 
doing that. We've been doing that for a while. Well, now I, I have a record player that I have completely dialed in, and it sounds fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I did was I bought – well, I bought two things, first of all. One of them was Green Day's American Idiot album on vinyl because that was a big part mm-hmm. of my childhood. I also bought this if you're on the live stream. It's the big sounds of the sports cars, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was two dollars, two dollars for this vinyl. Uh, <laughs> let me get this set up here. Give you, a, give you guys a little taste. Mm-hmm. My thing was, if nothing else, would be a cool decorative piece, right? Something when I, oh yeah, you know, at my own place, I could just put, it, frame it, or just set it against a wall somewhere. But um. You know, it's, I think, uh, judging by the cover, it's late 60s, early 70s. It doesn't mm. actually say, and unfortunately, it doesn't tell you where the cars are at or what track they're on. But uh, you just heard the vinyl click in there. Take a listen to this, it's kind of wild. Sports cars are noted for their cornering ability. In the next series of sounds, you will hear several sports cars cornering. Notice how they don't seem to slow down, but rather go around the corners at top speeds. <laughs> this is literally all it is. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so, I I mean, but I would never have known Capitol Records, right? Funded this mm-hmm. whole thing. I would never have known that this even existed, right? If I hadn't mm-hmm. gone into Spectrum Music in Wichita. Um, and check them out, which I highly recommend. I would love to do something uh, like collaborate with Spectrum in some way, you know, and kind of help keep that experience alive and showcase what they have to offer over there. Um, mm-hmm. But here comes another one. There you go. <laughs> this, this is the this is literally a vinyl, man. This is literally a vinyl with this on. <laughs> um, so uh, there you go. Um, so I love that. Check that out. Um, <laughs> and, and like I said, I think that's such a cre- uh, key and crucial component to um, going and shopping local, not just that, mm-hmm. but actually going in a store. You know, it's like the same mm-hmm. thing we were talking about last week with music. Like, you're only going to listen to what you think of at that time. Whereas when you go in the store, you'd be like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Right. Mm-hmm. I need that. Exactly. Got willing is something you actually need, not just want it. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I thought that was cool. And then we checked out Sweet and Saucy, like I was talking about. I'm going to do a live taste test on air, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Yeah. So first, I love uh, local. I First of all, I love sauces. That's kind of mm-hmm. my thing. But I love people that try to do things locally, like beer. Uh, a lot of microbreweries here in Wichita and in and around Wichita. A lot of great beer, to be honest. I wasn't a beer mm-hmm. guy. Um, until after several years of living here and trying that local stuff. And to be honest, I really don't drink mass produced beer anymore. Um, <laughs> I drink local stuff, which is cool. So mm-hmm. apparently there's a sauce thing too. This is called check it out. Keeper of the flames, three, one, six Chipotle crushed pepper, hot sauce. So uh keeper of the plains is the famous statue that we have here in Wichita. And this has part of the Wichita flag on it. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and, Hold up. Give it a good shake on camera. Mm-hmm. Ah. 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 There we go. It's all shaking up now. Give it a good little taste, man. I'm supporting mm-hmm. local. I'm supporting, local on, supporting local on the podcast right now, man. <laughs> oh, man. There's a lot of pepper in that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that taste... Man, that tastes so that good. good stuff. I kind of want to just drink it, drink it straight from the ball. You think I should? No, nah, man. I mean, you can, and it'll be a great way to clean yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. But I'm sure it, it tastes way better if you pair it with something, man. You're probably right. I uh, already know the result of that after having a whole bag of talkies one time. Um, <laughs> next up is Holmes made salsa, right? Mm. Wait, Holmes, Holmes made? Oh yeah, Holmes, Holmes made. made. Yeah, interesting. Okay, mango peach flavor. 
Wichita okay. tradition since nineteen twenty. That sounds good. Yeah, nineteen twenty-four. Right. It looks good. I like the branding on it. Some clean branding. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Shake it up. If you're listening on the audio, man, this is why you need to listen to or you need to get on the live stream. Exactly. You gotta check out the All live stream. On Facebook, man. This is content mm-hmm. we can only provide them with visuals. All right, mm-hmm. we or even check us out on YouTube where we can you can also check uh check out the videos after they've passed. That's true. This mm-hmm. is fantastic, man. This is, is some great salsa. It's really there's not hardly any kick to it, which it, I would like there to be some. Mm-hmm. But I could maybe just mix some of that hot sauce in here. <laughs> Go ahead and get dad, man. Ready? Open oh, it up. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, man. How you like it? Mm. You know, it's pretty good. It's uh, very mangoey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, the audio is so used right now if they didn't watch that. Um, that was really good. I really like that. So. Mm. Again, these are things, I guess my point with bringing this up, first of all, it was fun. And I just wanted to share it with the podcast listeners, but um, it's it's a ploy, I guess, to go and, and actually go places to shop. But not only that, but shop mm-hmm. local. Check out your local places. I'd driven by Sweet and Saucy for years, and I was like, what is Sweet and Saucy, man? I always wanted to know. So I was just walking by it the other day, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in here, see what it's all about. I bought fifty dollars worth of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so th- these are just the two local things I got. There was some other stuff too. There was a. This is from Texas. It's steak seasoning called Bowl. Blank, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know you. Said it from there, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's called that. Um, and then there was a. Uh, what, what else did I get? Oh, I got. Um, this is actually really cool. I got barbecue sauce that's in an mm. IPA bottle. It's in a beer bottle, and it's oh. beer infused barbecue sauce. Um, so okay, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah, just really interesting things I found by doing this. That I thought it was fun. I thought it was really cool. Um, and so yeah, I just wanted to share it with you people, uh, <laughs> you people. Um, but I just <laughs> wanted to <laughs> share it with everybody and. It really just kind of say, you know, I think that'd be a great thing for us to do in the future of the podcast is partner up with these local businesses and meet mm-hmm. with them, discuss and and get to know why they do what they do, you know, mm-hmm. um, and just learn a little bit about their business. So um, thought that was really great. Like I said, wanted to share it with everybody. So I hope uh, people enjoy that. But yeah, man. So I also want to ask you, you got a trip coming up, right? Mm, yeah, I do. I do. So, what's, so, what's uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, uh, me and Christina are going to, uh, Hawaii, um, in just a few, few days now. So that'll be really fun. Uh, um, we are, are going, going there for, for? Our, uh, we're going for our two year anniversary. So, oh, man. um, so it's been two years dating. It's crazy. Wow. Um, but yeah, so we're we're going there to kind of celebrate that, and uh, it'll also be really cool. Um, I have been to Hawaii once before, and I think I went to Honolulu, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we're actually going to Maui, so um, oh, wow, that'll be cool. So that'll be really really neat. Uh, this will be Christina's first time. And it'll be nice to just kind of get away. This will actually be like the first time I've actually been able to take like vacation days since I started sure. my new job. So uh, it'll be really nice uh, and really, really fun. Um, so I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited. I'm not going to lie. It's been kind of stressful <laughs> to kind of plan the whole thing out. Sure. Um, just because... It kind of it's funny because it started with uh, just finding that the tickets got uh, went on sale. So normally I've seen like the tickets for Hawaii like around like eight hundred to like a thousand dollars or something like that. Since you know it's so far away and just so out there, yeah. Um, but uh, there was a, a sale that Southwest was having, um, and so we were able to get the tickets for really cheap. Oh, wow. Um, and 
to, so we just kind of booked and then at that point we just kind of had to figure out the rest of the stuff you know figure out where we were going to stay what we wanted to do and stuff like that so uh it's been really really cool but kind of stressful but i am i am really looking forward to it i think it'll be amazing it'll be cool that i get to finally go back to hawaii because i told myself when i was younger uh, when i went the first time i was like i gotta go back again um, oh really so yeah they're really cool uh to go as a an adult this time. definitely what kind of things do you have uh planned can you share any of it uh well not exactly not yet <laughs> um but it's it's essentially i mean we're gonna try to do some uh parasailing and um some other things um and try out a bunch of cool restaurants so okay yeah mm -hmm. well what do you a guy like you do mm -hmm. uh surrounded by seafood <laughs> when you're <laughs> that's a good question um i just make sure i eat only things that are you know on the land so you know i'm just gonna grab me some chicken and some beef um uh, mostly probably chicken uh probably some pork but yeah uh anything that you know walks on the land i'm good to go but anything that swims in the sea i'm good <laughs> um but to be serious though i most of the time i actually um most of the time uh i actually just whenever i go into a restaurant if i know that it's a big seafood restaurant or something that they sell a lot of seafood i'll usually ask especially if it's like fried chicken or anything like that um uh i'll usually ask i was like if they fry it in the same grease as the fish that they yeah, do yeah. because that's that that's effed me up before um <laughs> <laughs> um and then um just kind of make sure that they don't do any contamination between like fish and the chicken. So I don't have any issues or whatever meal that I'm having. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's, that's using my big deal that I, my big thing that I, I have to kind of focus on. And I will say sometimes um, for the, like some Island places, it has kind of made me a little bit more deterred when it comes to that, especially since, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like some of the main things um at locate or at uh locations like those is seafood right oh like that's sure. the big yeah. dish right that's the big nice dish that everybody wants to eat uh, is usually seafood um mm. so i do always have to be a little bit more careful around there for that definitely definitely yeah do you um well, I yeah, I don't know, man. I, I let's just hope you come back in one piece, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> That'd be cool. I mean, Maui is kind of what the nicest, maybe the ritziest island. Is that fair to say? I don't know. It's perception it's supposed I got. to be. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be like the more like the rich people island or whatever like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the places are expensive, which is uh, yeah. insane. Um, so it does make sense, <laughs> um, Definitely. but I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's, it looks fine to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, good uh, on, dude. I was, yeah, because we were looking at some of the restaurant prices and they weren't too crazy or whatever like that. So yeah, I think it's just because Maui has a lot of like natural beauty, I'm not saying that any of Hawaii doesn't have that. So I don't want to say that, but I guess it's supposed to have like more cooler views than some of the others so they're going to charge you a premium for it but yeah 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 definitely well that'll be exciting to see and it will be kind of like a whole new trip for you since you hadn't been to that island um mm -hmm. but it'll be cool man I, I hope you bring back some photos and then we can share them with everybody on our social channels and everything like of that. course of course um, and then hear all about it once you get back side for that um mm -hmm. but yeah uh, in the meantime, I think we had a good discussion today. We wanted to get this in um, since you're going to be out of the land. <laughs> for, <laughs> for um, so, yeah, wanted to get this in. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, remember, support us by giving us a rate and review, uh, checking out our website, and 
liking us on Facebook. We were live streaming this whole time. Uh, obviously, as you could tell from my taste test, <laughs> um, <laughs> but be sure to, you know, go and check that out and, and like all those things, all that's listed in the description of this episode. And that's the best way to follow us and best way to support us. So, um, yeah, man, I really enjoyed this. Uh, mm-hmm, got a lot of good too. things coming our ways and, uh, really excited to share it with people in the near future. Um, also excited for, uh, some ideas with this podcast moving forward too. So mm-hmm. thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch up with you next week.